What's up everyone, Vu of Envu Films, and I am back with another idiotic video for you to watch. And today's video is idiotic because I'm about to review my 3,000th gimbal that I've ever owned, that I purchased myself, ever. It's a bit much, but uh, let's get to it. So today I'm gonna review this Chickadee China, made in China, DJI Ronin S2. I'm gonna get right to the point. It is the best gimbal you can buy today. 100%, no if, ands, or buts about it. Is it the strongest gimbal? Is it the most stable gimbal? Probably not, but in my opinion, overall, the overall package is the best you can get. Let me quickly tell you why. But first I wanna tell you that I'm not gonna go through like all the knickknacks uh, of this gimbal in terms of like the fact that it does Raven Eye, all the special features. I am a real world reviewer and in my opinion, in the real world, none of these filmmaker douchebags, YouTube douchebags, whatever, is gonna use like all these little features. You know, like how many times can you do a vertigo mode? How many times uh, do you find yourself setting up tracking with your gimbal? Probably zero. So most of you like me, is going to just mount a camera here and film while holding it and film and just hope that you get the stable footage with your gimbal and your camera. That's, that's, that is 99.999% of use cases, all right? And with that respect, this gimbal, along with many others, uh, including that DJI Ronin SC2, I'm gonna tell you why I bought this and I'm getting rid of that. In a moment, essentially, if you're spending money on a gimbal, whether it be three, four, five hundred dollars plus, you should be getting a pretty decent piece of kit to stabilize your trash video. So why is this gimbal, in my opinion, the best to get? One, obviously, it handles a lot of weight and it's very stable, point blank. I use Sony A7S III with the 50 millimeter G Master almost 99.9% .9 of the time on my gimbal as of late. So it's not a very, it's, it's overall, this camera is pretty light, but it is not really light for gimbal use per se. So you have this setup, you could do 2470 on this, no problem. So it follows suit with all the other higher end gimbals that are out these days, including the SC2. Weeble 2, Weeble S, Crane 2, etc. So in terms of just overall image stability, all that stuff, if you can't get good stable footage out of this gimbal, then you are a piece of trash that probably needs to quit trying. Of course, I'm just kidding. You all just need to work on your gimbal walk, heel toe, adding all of those fat, adding the overall stability factor, right? The reason why this gimbal is the best is everything else that's here. It is well built and all of these, the access locks are strong. The access uh, adjustment locks are strong. You, This will not ever budge on you, move uh, while, during transport. So when you put your camera back on, it is good to go. The knob here, that controls the tilt axis has very minute fine tuning of adjustments, which is awesome. Um, I wish this was on all other axes too, but I'll take it where it is. And most importantly, when you are traveling, when you are going from shoot location to loot, shoot location, or if you just need to pack it into your bag, put it away, or you wanna charge this removable battery inside like a drawer so there's not a bunch of stuff sitting outside in your office space, you can take it apart, see? So now you have this smaller, this pack, very packable gimbal setup to put away in your bag and when you're ready to shoot, it is quite easy to get back on, lock down and get back to shooting. Unlike some of these other gimbals, such as Weeble 2, which is pretty much the same size, but you can't pack it down. And it's just stuck at like pretty much 
the smallest you can get it is this size. And as you can see, it adds up. It could take up space in your bag. And to me, that's a no-go, okay? And the reason why I decided to go with this instead of the RSC2 back there, all bulk it out. The RSC2's locks got loose on me over time. I use it for about six months and the little, the, the gimbal adjustment locks, no matter how hard I twist it, it will start getting loose. I'd cover this in another video, but that was my biggest concern. And I didn't like the fact that I would go shoot something, take my camera off the gimbal. And then when I come back to put the, the camera back on the gimbal, I noticed that the balance was off and I had to rebalance it. And it's because the axis keeps shifting itself. Um, and that's a big problem to me in terms of my workflow and how fast I need to be to get up and going and start shooting. Uh, since I do like a lot of wedding films, a lot of events, a lot of run and gun situations. Um, yeah, that's a no-go for me. So I'm very satisfied with the fact that this is a super light gimbal. Matter of fact, it is like a pound, pound and a half lighter than like the Weeble 2. Um, handles just as much or more weight. Uh, and it's super packable. And like I said, the most important thing with gimbals is that it could balance a moderately heavy setup and also have great stable footage that if you walk properly, you get super stable footage and you don't have to worry about anything else. Matter of fact, there's a situation where, like I said, I was always have a 50 millimeter GM with my Sony A7S III balanced on here. And I just wanted to get some super wide stuff of this wedding venue. And I decided to just put my 14 millimeter, which is a completely different weight than the 50 millimeter. And I just wanted to do really quick. So I didn't want to like rebalance everything. And I just turned the gimbal on and yes, it started blinking. Yes, the gimbal didn't like it. It told me that something was really off balance, but I was able to shoot for five minutes with it, get nice wide angle shots, even though it was super off balance. And that was it. And I just took it off, put my 50 back in and we're on our way. Um, so it's really important to me to be just do things quickly and be able to go do things on the fly. And this gimbal does the job. Uh, I just, like I said, Stability, packability, and weight. This gimbal is the best when you take all those three categories and put them together compared to any other gimbal on the market. This is the best. Stability, packability, and weight. Um, yes, it just has tons of features, cool touchscreen, all that stuff. All that covered in other sponsored YouTube douchebaggery two douche reviews when this gimbal was released you go ahead and look at that but this is my opinion based off of real world use for the past two well the past month or so and and you know it seems like a very short period of time but i filmed a lot of different projects the past month uh i do a lot more than this youtube stuff so a lot of experience with this gimbal uh not only that I've owned a ton of other gimbals in the past, so I could have a pretty good uh, feel for gimbals in general. So we're talking about DS1 Beholder gimbal. You know what that is? Probably not. Crane 1, Crane M1, Crane M2, uh, Weeble Lab, Weeble S, Crane 2, Crane 2S, Ronin SC, Ronin SC2, Ronin, Ronin 2, like a lot of gimbals. I probably missed one or two. Oh, Feiyu Tech Trash, I had that. So I've had a lot of gimbals, you know, and this is by far the best overall packaged gimbal that you could buy. And I've mentioned before in another video, only problem is it's expensive, more expensive than other, other gimbals. But right now, if you want the best of the best gimbal, you're gonna have to spend the money. With that being said, guys, if this video was helpful to you in terms of determining what gimbal to buy or just entertainment factor, whatever it is, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. Greatly appreciate it. And until next time, lighten up.